It's harder to find yourself and what you love if you're only focused on what other people tell you you should do or say or be. You are grown. And I don't know how many people <laughs> can identify with this because what fun is life if you're not thinking of yourself at all? Hey everyone, I'm Shaquaya D and welcome to my bubble. This channel is for black women who are on their self-love journey and are learning to put themselves first and take off their superwoman capes. My bubble is my safe space to express myself as I inspire you to do the same on your journey. This is Love the Creative Black Woman, a series where we self-care through crafting as we connect on our self-love journey together. Over the past few weeks, we have been talking about vulnerability. We've talked about self-care, safe spaces, all of those things. And I already did my hot take on like vulnerability, but this week I just kind of want to talk to y'all just about like what I've been learning about myself. <laughs> okay, so I've come to realize on my vulnerability quest of learning to be more vulnerable with myself, I've been learning actually a lot of things about me and I guess the way that I've lived my life. And I know you guys have heard of being a people pleaser and I thought that I was that. So, okay, let me backtrack. Well, we watched this video about like branding and like having a two word brand. And I actually apologize probably an unhealthy amount <laughs> uh, to people just like as a general like reflex. So if something happens, maybe I don't know if you're in somebody's way like it's normal to say sorry you know excuse me da, 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 da. but like I'll say sorry in, in incidents where it's not my fault like things have happened and it's not my fault not in a car accident though because I, I know about that but <laughs> I'm gonna cut that part out but just in like in general life scenarios and as I was kind of I guess figuring out what what my two-word brand was Originally, my brother was like chronic apolo. No, what did he say? He said chronic apologizer is what he said. Cause I said sorry about something. He's like, it's okay, you're a chronic apologizer. And I was like, oh wow, wow. I feel like you just came from my neck a little bit. And he did, but it's okay. Because the thing is that I actually do apologize a lot. And I've been working on it for years to just not apologize as much but it's like it's literally a reflex so sometimes it's hard for me not to automatically say sorry about stuff because I don't even realize that I'm about to say it it just comes out then I was reading something and I realized that a lot of my life or a lot of my time and I know that a lot of the superwomen out there will be able to identify with this but a lot of times the things that I do I like make sure everybody else is okay. And we talked about this previously in some of the previous episodes, it's like making sure everybody else is okay before I check on myself or even just like doing things for other people before I do things for me. I might put things on the back burner for myself. And so then I was like, okay, am I a people pleaser? And I was like, okay, I guess I do fall into that category because that's also why I would be saying sorry about stuff because I want everybody else to feel comfortable even if, you know, I didn't really do something wrong. It's just like a reflex to be like, no, so like, it's, I'm sorry, that was my fault. You know, don't worry about it when it's like you actually inconvenienced me. Sometimes I do that. <clears throat> And I don't really have a, an example of it, so I'm sorry, but sometimes I do that. And then as I was sitting and I was thinking about my life and the decisions of my life, it's not always that I have issues telling people no. I do sometimes. It really depends on the people. And then I was, I was just sitting there thinking like, oh my gosh. Of course, the people that I care about, I want to say yes to all the time. And sometimes that's at the detriment of myself. But I realized as I went over my life and like some of the decisions, the question that I always have in the back of my mind is, what will my parents think? Why am I thinking about that? Why am I thinking about that? And it's so wild because in order to literally get to this question, this idea, even the thought process, I had to start being vulnerable 
with myself and I guess it just kind of opened up some thoughts in my head of like, all right, well, who are you actually thinking about when you say no to people? Because like, I'll feel bad, but I won't always feel bad necessarily for saying no per se. I guess like the source thought of it all is like, I said no, and it might be to an opportunity that maybe my parents would have been proud of, or I said no, and it's like, all right, well, dang, I, my my dad probably would have said yes to that. But it's like, your dad is not living your life. Your mom is not living your life. Why are you thinking about these people when you're making life decisions at this big old age of 29? And that's the question that I have for myself. And for other people, it might not be your parents that you have in, in mind. It might be other people. It might be your sister, your brother. It might be, it could be anybody that's in your mind that you're like, dang, well, what would they think of this? And at the end of the day, we have to make our decisions for ourselves, by ourselves, but with us in mind first because they're not living our lives. And I don't know why it took me 29 years to even realize that that was my thought process. I'm actually quite, <laughs> I was disappointed in myself. I'm not disappointed anymore because I'm actually just happy that I got here. Because if I know it, if I realize it, I can start to change it. The problem comes in when you don't know it, you don't realize it, or even if you realize it, but you don't want to change it. Now that's, that's a personal decision if you just don't want to change it. But for me, that's something that I want to change because I'm not going to keep holding myself back from shining my light because I got in the back of my head, dang, what my parents going to think? You are grown. And I don't know how many people <laughs> can I identify with this, but I really do think that it's such a thing where we grow up thinking about our parents or our siblings or people that are close to us and we want to make those people proud. And that's not a bad thing. I think the issue comes in when you wanting to make them proud outweighs your desire to be happy or to go after your dreams or to live your life just how you want to live it. I think that's where it really starts to hinder you, but at the end of the day, you got to look back at your life and you got to be happy. Now, I'm not saying like my parents want to keep me from my dreams or my music or anything like that, but I'm sure they would be a lot happier if I became a, a doctor, you know? <laughs> if I went on like a more certain path than entertainment at this moment. I probably wouldn't be on here talking to you guys, but I'm sure that they would be happy. Or if I decided to continue with soccer and I will be in the World Cup, you know? But this is what I chose and this is what I feel called to. But with that in mind, I think the main question that we have to ask ourselves when we make decisions is who are you making this decision for? Or who do you have in mind when you are making your decisions? Do you have yourself in mind? Do you have your children in mind? Do you have your future in mind? Do you have your siblings in mind? And it's not bad to make decisions with the people that you love in mind, but are you happy? Is it to your detriment? Like. You're going to make decisions with people. Sometimes your decisions do affect other people in your life. So you make you want to make sure that you are consulting people. Like, you know, if you're dating someone or if you're married, you want to consult your partner before you move forward in certain decisions. But you also have to know and welcome the idea of staying true to yourself through each decision and not doing it just because it will make somebody else proud, but because it will make you proud. That's my goal. Like, I wanna make me proud. <laughs> I wanna make me proud. I, I love my parents. I do. They're great people. They're amazing. But I want to make myself proud first. And it took me this long to even realize that I had other people in mind constantly when I was making decisions. Because what fun is life if you're not thinking of yourself at all? If you're going through this life and you're not thinking about you, that means you're probably not taking care of yourself. You're probably not going after any dreams or goals that you've ever wanted to do because 
if it was up to somebody else, you would probably be doing something different. Or you might be going after what seemed like your dream or what was your dream or somebody told you was your dream when you were younger, when you actually want to do something else. It's harder to find yourself and what you love and your hobbies or even the types of books that you enjoy. If you're only focused on what other people tell you you should do or say or be. And I think that, I mean, we're raised to listen to our parents. That's just, that's just life. Because our parents for, I'm going to say at least 15 to to 18 years, maybe 20, 25, depending on who you are, they're making the decisions for you. They're booking the appointments. They're finding the doctors. They are finding the schools. They're helping to pay for the schools. They're helping to pay for the cars, the bills, whatever it is. And then you start being like, okay, well, like my mindset a lot of times was, all right, yeah, I'm gonna pay y'all back. I'm gonna pay y'all back. I got you, I'm gonna make y'all proud. I gotta make me proud first. And a byproduct of me making me proud is gonna make them proud. They might not know it. They might not understand it, but that's okay. Because they weren't given the vision that I was given. They weren't given the passion that I was given. They probably like, why is she on this camera crafting and talking to the camera? Like they, they might be doing that. It's like, now my mom be watching, hey mom. But it's not their dream. It's not their life to live. So if you're gonna live your life, make sure you're living a life that's going to make you proud. I wanna be happy in life. I don't wanna be out here constantly worried about what they gonna think. If I buy this shoe, are they gonna like it? Like I used to, I guess I used to need a lot of validation like from my family and stuff like that. Like I would, every time I got dressed, I'm sending pictures like, hey, what y'all think? What y'all think? What y'all think? And it's like, that's not necessary. I've now found my style. I already knew my purpose. Now I know that I don't need anybody to validate my purpose or to validate what I'm doing or to validate just my experiences or my emotional state or anything like that because I can do that myself and also like God already gave me everything that I need so I don't necessarily need you to approve I'm on this journey for me so dear black woman just go for what you want be all that you can be and shine your light as bright as ever do not stop because people are unsure of what you're doing. Of course, take care of yourself. Make sure that you're doing something that you love and take care of the people that you feel you need to take care of. Love on the people that you love and allow them to express themselves, but do not allow them to dictate your experience in each moment. Do not allow them to make you feel like you can't make a decision without their validation because you can. You are who you are because your community, your parents, your people, they raised you to be the amazing black queen that you are. So walk tall in it, own it, love it, and be free. I'm learning these things also. Just allow yourself to be happy, make your decisions, get clear on your vision, and be vulnerable with yourself. Go for what you want. Love the creative black woman. Thank you guys for joining me for another episode of Love the Creative Black Woman. This was the season finale, I am calling it, but we will be back very soon with some more episodes for you guys. I'm very excited to continue this journey with you. So let me know below in the comments if there's any topics that you guys want to talk about, like, let's talk. I know we touched on vulnerability, safe spaces, self-care, all of that stuff. But let me know in the comments if there's any specific topics y'all want to hear. And we can make sure we we talk about them in this upcoming season. Also, if you want to watch this podcast live, don't forget to join the Patreon for the low, low price of $3 a month. 
You can watch this podcast as well as the Gray Area podcast and other content that we have for you guys live. And I'll have some new music coming for you guys in the meantime and some vlogs. But I will see you guys soon. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. And I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you very, very soon. Bye. <laughs> All right. Is there anything I missed? Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an upload. Um, and I will see you guys very soon. Bye.